everybody. Welcome to our online talk or webinar titled More Than Just Results, Empowering Exome Analysis with Accurate Clinical Data. This talk will be divided in a short introduction where I would like you to be integrated in the context for it, a timeline events until reaching the announcement of the finished human genome project will be summarized. Then, a basic introduction about short education where I want to explain what we mean with exon and diagnostic clinical utility of it based on, on clinical data. After this short introduction, we are going to speak about which type of exome sequencing we could offer and how is the entire process here in reference laboratory. In order to implement the concepts explained, two anonymous examples, real cases, will be shared. And finally, we end up with a report where we transmit writing the most useful personalized information. Well, then, let's start. Being aware that we are in the genomic era, where today's researchers and clinicians have already started to use the power of genomics to improve health, I would like to share with you that there's been a timeline events that I would like to mention. 1988, that was the year to lay out a plan for the Human Genome Project, where countries as US and UK were mainly involved. 1995, the first Human Genome Project map it was met. 1999, the International Human Genome Project announced successful completion of pilot project. 2001, it's my favorite year because of bringing the Human Genome Project into classroom. The Human Genome Project, HGP, created a free multimedia as an educational tool for high school students and general public. 2003, April 2003, we were witness the completion of the human genome sequence. This year was when the National Human Genome Research Institute announced the first grants aimed at discovering all parts of the human genome that are crucial for biological function. Finally, 2004, it was published a scientific description of the finished human genome sequence, where we were reducing the estimated number of human protein coding genes from 35,000 to only 20, 25,000. Okay, then after this context, what does exome mean? If we zoom in on our cells and access to the nucleus where the entire instructions our DNA is compacted in what we call chromosomes, we can imagine a chromosome as a loop of rope. If we start to unravel it, the DNA helix X is observed. At this step is where I could share with you that a fragment or piece of DNA is a gene in a very general and simple way. Each gene is constituted by regions called exons and introns. Then the word exome came from exon, which is the portion of a gene that codes for amino acids, then proteins. Having said this, exon is the parts of the gene sequences that are expressed in proteins. Then, when we speak about exon, we are referring to coding region in the human genome, and it is about 200,000 exons. 
Nowadays, the Exxon Potential Knowledge has given the world a resources of detailed information. This information can be thought of as part of the basic set of inheritable instructions for the development and function of a human being. Okay, then let's go to explain the same concept, Exxon, taking an apple as an example. The whole apple, as you can see here in the picture, will be what we call genome. The whole human genome with the coding and non-coding introns region. Reference laboratory offers genome tests as well. Then the exon would be a slice between one to two percent of the genome representing all protein coding regions. And in this picture, you also could see the seeds as part of this fruit which would represent a group of genes or panels. They are genes selected by us. In these two, in this slide, sorry, uh, there are also two pictures. Um, they come from papers published where the authors collect the different techniques used in diagnostic where there is a suspicion of a genetic condition. Nowadays, Due to rapid advances in genomic technologies, we are able to read, to sequence the slice in a single test, which comes together with developments in computer technology, karyotype, array based on copy number, and exome genome sequence, each one with their limitations based on resolutions and kind of variant. I mean, kind of change or alteration in the DNA analyze. Okay, then if after a clinical or family evaluation and initial genetic test, the condition cannot be diagnosed, exome genome analysis could allow us to identify new variants, new candidates, incrementing the possibility to find out pathogenic variants associated with the condition. Applying this into clinical where medical practitioners assess patients in order to diagnose, how do we empower exome analysis in order to diagnose? One key factor is to analyze based on accurate clinical data. And how do we do it? As we said before, diagnostic yield is continuously improving thanks to use of whole exome sequencing to diagnose patients with a suspected genetic disorder. However, due to incomplete knowledge on genes associated with the condition, the diagnostic field still remains below. We have a variation between 8-70%. In order to improve, the development of database was created. What does it mean? This means a collection of data where we accumulate evidences about association between clinical data and genetic variants. One of these databases is called the Human Phenotype Ontology, or HPO. HPO is a database that provides a standardized vocabulary of phenotypic abnormalities meeting with human genetic conditions. The HPO is currently being developed using the medical literature Orphanet, Decipher, and Omin. Phenotypic fixtures are formally represented at terms. And what does it mean? That we have a dilated acyclic graph from where we could indicate general terms as, for example, cardiovascular abnormality and ending up in a specific term as atrial septal defect with some causal variants as candidates. Okay, 
them supporting the title of this webinar, Empowering Exome Analysis with Accurate Clinical Data. There is a great paper. It's a review by Wright and collaborators published last year in Nature Review Genetics, and they are emphasizing the same messages explained before. On the one hand, the necessity to adjust as much as possible the genetic test. For example, in this graph, for a specific phenotype as a cystic fibrosis, where the genetic heterogeneity is low and single gene sequence in a general way of view is the best diagnostic test strategy. However, non-specific phenotype, non-specific clinical data as hearing loss or intellectual disability where the heterogeneity is high in both in clinical and genetic aspects, then the diagnostic testing strategy is based on whole exon sequencing or whole genome even. With them, we identify an elevated number of genetic variants and many of them could be in several genes even due to polygenic cause. These non-specific phenotypes, of course, they are inside of complex diagnostic. At this level, clinical data, family data would increment the diagnostic rate. These authors also are showing a graph here in figure C representing a diagnostic rate of whole genome, whole exome sequences based on literature. And as you can see here, the highest diagnostic rate is obtained by trio-based whole genome or exome. Trio means parents and child together. And the benefit of trio is the higher identification of candidate variants due to find out novel variants and its validation in the parents. As all of us can imagine, these studies require a multidisciplinary team to be efficient. In the right image, we can see a workflow. It's about number of candidate variants obtained during the genome exome analysis process. And as you can see, there is a significant change here with this green cycle, significant change of number of variants when clinical data is available. We need to keep this in mind. The precise description of clinical data give power to exome analysis. They help us to filter, to select variants from millions of them. Having said that, in other words, based on a recent meta-analysis of studies published again last year, this time in genomic medicine paper, authors showed that the pool diagnostic utility using these potent genetic techniques as exome genomes was significantly greater in hospital than in laboratories. As you can see here, the diagnostic utility was higher, significantly higher, when these exons genome analysis are made in hospital in comparisons with the number obtained when they were made in laboratories. And although meta-analysis had several limitations, the major difference between hospitals and laboratory interpretation is the quality and quantity of phenotype information, clinical data, family data available at time of interpretation. Usually, laboratories have less information content. In the graph below, our colleague Trujillano already showed an association 
between the number of phenotypes available at interpretation and diagnostic yield. As higher number of phenotypes, higher number of candidates of pathogenic variants. Taking into account all evidences published, it is a privilege to work at Reference Laboratory. There is a fantastic team behind, focusing on patient benefit. And because of that, because we give value to variant interpretation in order to facilitate part of the diagnostic process. Reference Laboratory emphasized the level of communication during this workflow. What to analyze and what to inform Reference Laboratory emphasizes the communication before the test and before the report is sent out. Well, having said that, how many types of exome analysis do we offer? Coming back to the Apple example, as you can observe, observe in this picture, we can offer the whole exome sequencing where we check 21,000 genes. Here, the benefit, one of the benefit is that for heterogeneous clinic and genetic condition, in addition to genes associated with known conditions, every single day new genes are coming out and we could keep it up updated. Of course, it is a tremendous work because the number of variant of unknown significance is high. Another type of exome is the clinical exome sequencing. In this kind of, we analyze around 7,000 genes associated with known conditions. Finally, we also offer panels or group of genes for a specific condition. In case any variant were found in the selected group of genes, we always have the possibility to extend the analysis from panels to clinical exome. In addition to this information, we need to keep in mind the option for TRIO for both, for whole exome and clinical exome. Okay, let's summarize the process in the next slide. We get the blood sample, which could be sent out using as well our dry blood spots cards, which it's really useful for our international customers. Once blood sample is received, DNA is extracted and prepared to be sequenced. For this analysis, as we had mentioned before, in order to be cost effective, clinical data is essential. Reference laboratory is translated. We are translating clinical terms in HPO. Regarding the HPO, Reference Laboratory also facilitates a list of HPO where phenotype could be selected by physicians. And I would like also to say we compromise to give back answers in less than 30 days. Although in a realistic way, sometimes this time it depending on the case. Okay, then how do we analyze exome? How is the analysis part? The analysis could be divided in two parts. And the idea is, as you can see here in this picture, we have a number, a huge number of variants that we are going to filter all of them until getting casual, one or few casual variants. Then, we can divide this analysis into parts. The first parts where filters are based on controls, poblacional variants, sequencing errors, allelic frequency below 1%, to discard variants over 1%, predicted deleterious variants, both as insignificant variants, 
and we also used the database of human genome mutation database. Then there is a second part where filter is based on clinical data phenotype. In this part, trio analysis is very useful. As you can see in these pictures, in case of, for example, a recessive disease with a compound heterozygose variant or our homozygous variant, the information by parents validate the pathogenic variant found. Another example could be for a dominant monogenic disease where it could be de novo or it could be inherited. Okay. In other words, and with the compromise of increasing the diagnostic field, in the first part, exome analysis is empowered by using bioinformatic filters. And here, candidate variants from this part are analyzed by human genome mutation data in order basically to reduce the risk of, of missing pathogenic variants. After that, variants are classified by American College of Medical Genetics guidelines by us. Then the obtained variants are filtered using the HPO facilitate. The phenotype abnormalities associated with genes, this step is made scoring genes using individual HPO. I mean, the possible causal genes associated to each HPO. And later on, the possible causal genes considering all HPO together. Of course, literature analysis, the use of precise database and others among contacting physicians are important parts of this analysis. And in cases where a trio analysis, where we don't have too much information, of course, a trio analysis, um, it's important. And when we don't have a trio analysis, always segregation analysis are recommended. Well, then let's try to put in practices these concepts. The first case example is a test based on clinical exome sequencing. I mean, more than 7,000 genes analyzed. This analysis was done in a sample blood from a boy, and the boy is seven years old. The boy presented a phenotype described as autism spectrum disorders, ears without normal folding, long eyelashes, and dental anomalies. For these boys, there was a normal array result. We didn't get the information about the resolution. It was done in another center. And after controls filters, around 11,000 variants were identified. This number was reduced to 99 using each HPO in an individual analysis. Taking into account all HPO together, the number of variants was reduced to 42. And then after delicated analysis of every single variant of these 42, it's been obtained two candidated variants. One was classified as likely pathogenic with an autosomal dominant, dominant pattern. And this variant is present in a gene called Shank3, which is associated with phelan mcdermin syndrome. Another variant, second candidate, was a variant of unknown significant and is, as is lex linked, and it was also reported. So both variants at the moment are under segregation analysis. Okay, the second case. The second case example, this time is a whole exome sequencing. 
it was ordered by our physician and this time it was considered in a boy and the boy is 12 years old. We know there is consanguinity in the family history and the symptoms were congenital cataracts. This boy had surgery on both eyes. This boy also suffered bilateral sensorineural hearing loss. Under development, testicles and micropenis, persistent changes on echocardiography, changes on hand as well, and obesity, dysmorphic features as short neck, prominent forehead, polytelia, and horseshoe kidney. Then the analysis around 60. 3,000 variants were identified in the first time. This number was reduced to around 400 using each HPO in an individual analysis and then taking, taking into account all HPO together, the number of variants was reduced to 200 and after a delicate analysis again, it has been obtained two candidate variants, both present in the same gene. The name of the gene in this case is the ALMX1, and we got two variants of unknown significance. We know variants in this gene have been associated with Alstrom syndrome with a recessive inheriting pattern, and we were aware about the consanguinity present in the family. Then again, segregation analysis is recommended. Finally, we reflect the useful information during the process based on informed consent and a process of communication, of course, during the pre-test and post-test analysis. We reflect this information in our report. I have to say, the communication and informed consent are critical for us. In order to value the interpretation of this kind of test in a personalized and professional code, which variant do we report and how? Using sensitive words and respecting always patient autonomy. Then, reference laboratory, we are patient center in a certified laboratory. Because of that, our pre-analysis and post-analysis are part of our workflow. And I would like to say again, our turnaround times is tried to be less than 30 days for any genetic study for all of our collaborative hospitals and laboratories around the world. And it was a pleasure for me to share with you this presentation. And with this last uh, slide, I would like to finish the talk. Thank you for your attention. Now the time is opened to receive questions and it will be a pleasure for us to answer to you. Okay, we have a question. The question said, when do you recommend whole exome or clinical exome analysis? Okay, it's a good question. Thank you very much. I have to say for this question, firstly, unfortunately, we don't have official guidelines to support us. So the decision is a team decision so there is a workflow team and it's not depending on reference laboratory. The workflow team also includes our physicians, our customers, again, for the benefit of the patient. So then basically after this short introduction, when there is a, a clinical evaluation and when we have initial genetic tests with normal results, when 
we have a clinical and genetic heterogeneity condition, in that kind of situations, it's where we could consider the whole exon or clinical exon. The whole exon usually is recommended for intellectual discapacity, for example, when we have intellectual discapacity uh, or entities where the heterogeneity is high. Why? Because we have the clinical exon analyzed in these 21,000 genes, then we keep open to find out new genes and we increase the spectrum of finding candidates pathogenic variants to explain the diagnosis. There is also the possibility to text us by webinars next reference laboratory dot s where we promise to answer all questions received. Okay, so our time is getting closed. So thank you very much again. It was a pleasure for us. I hope you to have an enjoyable day. Thank you.